Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let's talk about AI functions. I have been explaining in my previous videos all different stops related to Databricks free editions. This is the playlist. So there are different videos related to Databricks free editions. But in this video, as I mentioned in the previous video, I'm going to talk about the AI functions. First, I will go through this documentation from Databricks and explain you a little bit about what AI functions in Databricks. And we will go through one general example using the AI query. And the other one, we will just create a catalog and create a schema, create a table inside it and use the AI functions. The main idea of this video is to get familiar with AI functions so that you can use those in your business use cases. Let's get into it. First, let's go through this documentation. It says apply AI on data using AI functions. This is in public preview. And by the way, I don't know when you will be watching this video, but it might be already in general available or not. But now as of this recording, it is in public preview. So here it says, okay, this article describes Databricks AI functions and supported functions. So first let's understand what are AI functions, right? Before implementing it, it's better to understand so that you get the clear picture of what it is all about. I'm going to read the documentation because Databricks has provided really, really good documentations on what all different aspects of Databricks resources are. So here also, this cause AI functions are built in functions that you can use to apply AI like text translation or sentiment analysis on your data that is stored on Databricks. They can be run from anywhere on Databricks, including Databricks SQL, Notebooks, Lakeflow, uh, Declarative Pipelines, and Workflows. And it also mentions here AI functions are simple to use, fast, scalable, analysts can use them to apply the data intelligence, and so on, right? So it can be applied in any use cases that you have in your company, but you need to first understand, okay, in which use cases you need to apply it, right? So yeah, there is all sorts of things. As I mentioned before also, AI query is a general purpose function that allows you to apply any type of AI model on your data. I will provide this documentation link in the description of the video so you can explore more if you want. It says here AI query and now there is also what is the type and what is the supported model for this AI function and the requirements. This is what I have been also been asked many times that okay some of the queries are not working in my machine. What I'm trying to say is certain versions of Databricks runtime. So you need to be taking into account that the Databricks runtime 15.4 LTS or above is required right just mentioning this here when i read the documentation so here are also the models that are being supported you can go through this it's just providing you some examples how to use it and so on i'll provide the link in the description as i mentioned earlier now let's get into the databricks ui before going into that part I also want to highlight that I had this 30 days of Databricks video, which is highly appreciated and many people are finding it helpful. And you can see that there are 65,000 plus views in the whole playlist. Just go through it. Maybe some of the videos might be helpful. I have explained from the Databricks community edition, which is not there anymore. But now we have this community free edition. I'm explaining those there. And also I have explained in the premium version also how you can do this. You can just scan the videos and go through it. And by the way, from today's video, I am also going to be providing the norm modding in the video because some of you mentioned that, okay, it would be helpful if I put the number in the title or thumbnail itself so that you know which video to watch in which sequence. Now let's get into the UI. This is the UI. I have already opened one SQL query in an editor. What I went, let me first go to the main page. I go to the SQL editor on the left. Let me make the screen a little bit bigger so it's easier. From the SQL editor, you can create any SQL queries or whatever you want to do. Here I have the link, which is exactly the one that I had explained you before. So this is how you can use it. Normal SQL statement, select as AI query. And here I am providing the name of the last language model that I want to use. 
I have already explained this in my previous video, but Databricks has already provided some of the large language models for us to use for free. You can go to the playground to see that or you can go to this models tab. There are different models. Here you can see there are some ready state and these are the LLMs which are being provided by Databricks. So we can use that already. Here you can see the chart model. If you want to do some embeddings, there is also the embedding models being provided. There is also this thing called agent which I created manually and then you can also deploy it. So it will be appearing here and you can use that as as an as endpoint, right? So now let me go back into the SQL editor. It's as simple as it is. You can just provide AI query and the model that you want to use. And here is the uh, query mention in which age group the age of passengers are. I want to be in three groups. So what I'm trying to uh, explain here is I want uh, to use the Titanic data set. And if I go to this catalog view, you can see I'm going to the Titanic data set. This is the table that I want to use inside it. I have many columns. So here what I'm trying to say is use this large language model. This is the prompt that I want to provide you. Go into the age column and do the summary. As it is mentioned here, mention in which age column this, this, this. And I want it as a summary, but this is just a naming. But what you can do here is you can say age group instead of summary. So yeah, then I can just run this. If I run this here, first there should be a cluster or compute to be attached. It says start the compute. Yes, I want to start the compute. And now the compute is getting started. We'll go through all the rows of this table and just it will go through all the tables and all the rows and in that A's column and it will just group them in in the group like okay three groups less than 30 32 60 and 60 plus you will analyze the age of that particular passenger and provide a new column for us called age group so here you can see this is the age column and actual value of the data set and here i have the age group and here it says based on the age 22 i would categorize it as less than 30 this age falls in the first group and as 22 is indeed less than 30 so you can see that it is here you can do some kind of formatting and just say don't provide any instruction just provide me in, in which group it follows that is prompt engineering but you can go and do those things this is what i explained from the data perspective meaning that if you want to work with the data but this works as a normal conversation with like chat gpt or some other providers for example here i can say generate a concise cheerful email title for a summer bike sale i will just highlight this and run it and now it will provide me the uh, cheerful email here are a few options it is providing me the title i can even just say normal question like explain briefly about nepal and it will provide me the brief summary of Nepal. So Nepal is a country located in South Asia, bordered by India and China. It's known for its and all the different things. And Kathmandu is the capital city of Nepal. So you get the point how easy it will be just to use this, this query. And once you start experimenting in your data, it will be quite powerful. But now let's go into one step ahead. Uh, with just normal AI query but now let's go into the second SQL I have it here so now what I will do this is here just as an example I didn't have this data science basics but I created this data science basics but if you want to create new catalog you can either do it from the UI or use SQL directly okay as you can see you can create a catalog and so on but I already have the catalog data science basics here inside it I have this YouTube and I have already created the product reviews. So this is how you can just run, right? I will not run it again because I have already uh, run this. And this is how you can create a table inside it. You can create a catalog, a schema, and a table name with the columns you want. So here I just want to have the ID and the review. 
and insert the rows, meaning that I want to insert something inside that table. I'm saying insert into this particular table, ID review and the values, I'm just providing it here. You can even run this again if you want. It will just overwrite it just to show you that I can run this now. Here you can see inside the YouTube, there is this product details. It means go through it inside the data science basics inside youtube yes there is this product details and here we have this id and review right and here we have given primary key that's the reason it is saying here pk so yeah that is what we have here and now we can see that the number of affected rows is six because we have six now let's apply some ai functions inside it this will be a real use case. Instead of the normal AI query, I'm going to use something called AI analyze sentiment. So if you want to know the sentiment of certain columns or certain values in the column and so on, you can use this inbuilt, inbuilt AI analyze sentiment. So what I'm doing here, just analyzing the sentiment, I'm saying select review, right? I want to go into the review column, AI analyze sentiment. And I'm passing the column as sentiment and then from this product reviews. That's it. But, but one thing to remember here is I'm just providing here the name of the table. So this is also some of the question that I get many times where you are saying that the query does not find the Unity catalog path. If you are using something different, like here it is data science basics YouTube and inside that we have the product reviews. So in this case, you can already run the table name here because we have this catalog and schema already on the higher level. But if you don't have this here, always provide the three level hierarchy. It will not give any errors, right? So here I will just run this. Now it will go through that, use that AI function, AI analyze sentiment, there you go now you can see it went through our uh, review here it is negative mixed and all sorts of things so it is going inside it and providing us and the thing here is you can see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so there is 18 right why there is 18 it's because i had already run this before and when i insert into this one it insert it because i'm not overwriting it so i write it three times that's the reason it is going into and adding all the rows here yeah, but i just use this six you can see after six it's the duplication right so here one two three four five six beautiful dress so that's it so you can just use it like this to get the ai sentiment and you can see there is sentiment and negative mixed and all sorts of things so now uh, the second thing what we can also do is we can classify the reviews so based on the query i'm saying the select review and ai classify there is another ai function called ai classify and you can see if I just hover on top of it, it will show me all the, the all the function descriptions. I'm providing the review again and I'm saying array. So there is arrives too late, wrong size, wrong color. And it will provide that as a reason based on the column. And here I'm saying where AI analyze sentiment review is, is negative. So you can see I'm having these two different things. I'm going to select this part and then run this. So this is how you can do it. And the good part of the AI functions is that you can extract information from the reviews. Here I'm saying select review and AI extract usual size one and AI classify size is wrong. This is just a simple logic. And I'm taking this example from the documentation. You can use this for your use cases. I can just go here, select this and run. And now we can have based on this particular thing, like okay, I want to have the AI extract things from the review. And then I want to classify that also. So now you can see this is the actual column. And here I have this usual size is medium and all sorts of things. And here this is size is wrong or size is right, something like this, right? So yeah, I think this is the last example here. I have generate responses with recommendations also. So here you can see, and now I'm using the normal AI gen, which I used before also. So I can say generate a reply in 60 words to the customer's review, mention their opinions are this, 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 go to this column as a reply from this where AI sentiment is negative. So you can see that this is a real business use case, right? If you get some 
uh, reviews from the customer and if it is negative then what you need to do in real life also thus create a reply in 60 was to address the customer's review mention their opinions are valued and a 30 percent discount coupon or whatever discount coupon code or percentage it is this is how in normal scenario also it works like if you get some frustrated reviews and so on you try to convince your customers by giving some discounts and this is exactly what the logic is here you can just run this query and now you will get this logic being applied so here you can see this is the actual column here before right and then this is the reply thank you for sharing your feedback your opinions are valued and we are sorry you can use this to send the email to the customer that's the example i wanted to show you in this video i hope with these examples now you get to know what ai functions are and how to use that in your use cases or just to practice it's good to learn new functionality of databricks you don't know when that will be helpful at some projects it might be helpful it's better to know than nothing that's all for this video i hope you learned something new today if you haven't subscribed then please do so it will help motivate me to create videos like this in the future if you have already subscribed then thank you you can just give a like share whatever you want to do it it's up to you that's all for this video thank you for watching and see you in the next one